think we have manufacturers of chemicals. They know their products. They know what they produce. So they know the properties of the substance. They know the toxicological profile, ecotoxicological effects. And, but then they need to assess these substances to ensure that they are used safely. And for that, they need to know how are the substances used and how are the substances used in the supply chain. This is the knowledge that the downstream users have. So supply chain communication is there to bridge the gap so that the manufacturers get this information on how substances are used, but also later on, the users of the chemicals, they get information on how the substances can be used safely after the assessment has been performed, so that we don't have theoretical uses in the registration dossier. We need to find ways to make this information available upstream so that the assessment can be done on real conditions of use. And this is the flow of information that should go up the supply chain. Then suppliers, registrants, should assess this information and should take conclusions on how the substances should be used safely for these conditions of use, and they should communicate this information down in the supply chain. I put on the slide helpful information, and this is very important. I mean, too much information, even if it's all interesting or, or, or part of the information of REACH, can really uh, kill the usefulness if you communicate too much. But then I also wanted to speak a little bit about the top of this uh, flowchart, the information that goes to authorities and to the uh, general public. I think we all know that the registration process is submitting dossiers to the authorities, and the authorities then look at it and, and do some screening. Of course, hazard information is very important for this, but use and exposure information is equally important. If we want authorities to focus the resources on those cases where it's really worth investing, authorities need to know not only what are the most hazardous substances, but also those substances that are used in a way that can present a risk. The main body of the safety data sheet has the more substance-specific information, which is relevant across uses. So properties, physical chemical properties, regulatory information, has the substance been registered? then you will see the registration number. Is the substance uh, subject to authorization under REACH? You will see, have an authorization number. All this kind of information you will see in the main body. Exposure scenarios, I mentioned already, they have use-specific information. So for each use, you have one exposure scenario that tells you what are the conditions of safe use in this case. It can include exposure estimations. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And then the regulation did not specify any format. At the moment, we have a recommendation from authorities together with industry to use a four sections format for exposure scenarios. We have made templates and we have made examples of how exposure scenarios could look like. And we have all of them available on the ECA website. So I would really invite everyone to look at them if you are wondering how to structure these exposure scenarios. So we have created the Exchange Network on Exposure Scenarios. This is what we call INES. Whenever something is final, we conclude that it's a good practice, we publish it on the INES website. So again, you have the link there, and I would also invite uh, everyone to have a look to it because there are many, a lot of good work being done there. Well, first is uh, to make sure you get information from the supply chain on realistic conditions of use. And we propose to use what we call use maps for that. So instead of having companies talking to each of their customers, sending questionnaires, how do you use the substance, please tell me, we think it's more efficient if industry associations put together these use maps where they describe in a standardized way the most common uses that take place in this particular sector and the typical conditions of use that are uh, uh, applied, implemented. And then the second solution is make use of IT tools. I think the best way to ensure consistency, to prevent mistakes, to process big amounts of information is to take advantage of IT-based solution. The first one is our own tool, so I will also make a little bit of publicity of ECAS tool, KESAR. We have this chemical safety assessment tool, which enables registrants to generate exposure scenarios on the basis of the information that you have in Euclid. And by that, we at least ensure consistency between the information that you send to authorities and the information that you send down the supply chain. The second type of IT tool that may be interesting for uh, the top of the supply chain is the ESCOM package. This is an IT package that uh, will be, uh, it's already available on our very first version, but we will do a major release uh, in July. 
and it consists of a catalog of standard phrases that can be used for exposure scenarios. And then next to the catalog of standard phrases, we have an XML schema, which will give an electronic structure for exposure scenarios. So instead of receiving a, a PDF that you print and then you need to browse through it, you will receive an XML with the information of the exposure scenarios that you can import in your systems, and that makes it much easier to process the information. We are trying to increase the transparency and the predictability of where our authorities putting their focus at the moment. And we have published what we call the PACT, Public Activities Coordination Tool, on the ECA website, where you will see substances that are now under scrutiny, substances that different authorities are interested in. Doesn't mean that there will be a regulatory action at the end, but at least you know that your substance is being looked at. This is maybe a good time for you to look at your registration dossiers to make sure that they are in good shape. Industry has developed a methodology called the Lead Component Identification, LCID. That is an industry-developed methodology to recommend formulators how to pick information from different substances, what is relevant for each substance, and then put something together for the mixture. And then we reach the end users, the end of the supply chain. So they have their own um, challenges. And I think they need one solution. They need a simple format that en en encompasses all the safe use information that has been generated down the supply chain. So industry, again, has uh, put together a format. It's called the SUMI, the Generic Safe Use Mixture Information, that uh, is recommended for this very end of the supply chain. It's just one pager. It has a structured information. It's based on the substance exposure scenario but it has pictograms and, and standard phrases so that it, it's hopefully useful for, uh, for the uh, workers that are using the chemicals. And with this, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.